Hey, before we get started, I need you to do two things. The first thing I need you to do is drop a comment. And when you drop this comment, I want you to drop a number between 1 through 100. Whoever gets the closest to the number I pick, they are going to get special access to something I got coming up. Some real special and top secret. So drop that number in there and uh, hopefully he win. <laughs> hey, man, ring the bell before you walk up in my house, all right? <laughs> Ring the bell mean hit the like button. If you don't like the videos, YouTube gonna think that my videos suck. So if YouTube think my videos suck, they're not gonna show it to other people. So you need to show YouTube my videos don't suck by hitting the like button. Thank you. Ooh, here go a bunch of creepy, mysterious photos that shouldn't ever exist. But they do exist. The McMinnville UFO. Now, 1950, McMinnville, Oregon. Uh, it's this photo here, thought to be the original UFO. And the reason this one is so famous because it was picked up by Life magazine and went on to get featured in hundreds of newspapers and stuff across the country. Now, they say um, this is after 12 years after the World of Wars thing broadcast and fear of the unknown was fresh in pop culture. So, you know, hey, man, um, you know, again, this stuff is like when it comes to the UFOs, man, like, hey, you know, a, a, a balloon that's shaped like a, you know, a flying saucer is possible. Shoot, it's possible that the government got some stuff that can, you know, that they got airplanes rigged up or something to look like a flying saucer. So, you know, hey, when it comes to the space stuff. You know, it, it, I ain't going to knock it, but like, hey, <laughs> what you seeing is probably something that's owned by the government, all right? It probably ain't owned by uh, E.T. and them. Brown Lady of Rainham Hall, 936. Photographers from County Line Life, County Country Life magazine took a snapshot in Rainham Hall, Norfolk. Now, the story went in 19, 1835. It was this house guest in the hall seeing a phantom in a brown dress with her eyes gouged out, wandering the halls. Now, to this day, nobody can explain what this white image in the photo could be, though many people say it lacks a good deal of authenticity. Hey, man, you know, ghost photos always, you know, can kind of be explained by, you know, problems or people manipulating the photos, especially if it's for a magazine, you know. Back then, hey, man, you know, magazines ain't selling good. Ain't no wars going on, you know. Ain't no presidents being killed. Hey, let's, let's throw a ghost picture on the front cover, you know. Hey, all right, all right, let's, let's get it. You know, so, yeah, it kind of always can be messed with. Um... But what is the explanation on why ghosts show up in pictures, but you can't see them in person? What is the explanation behind it? I'm, I'm curious to that. Like, why would that be so? The Hesdalen Light. These mysterious lights over Hesdalen Valley have been reported multiple times for the last 80 years. But it was during 1981 to 84 that the lights started appearing much more. Now, over 20 times a week, now, to the point where people would show up just to see. Some say it's an unstable tear through space and time. One we can't yet. Now, this I gotta look up, because this sounds like something that could be true. I gotta see if there's like some video on this, because if it's from 81 to 84 and it was happening 20 times a week, then Mug should have been standing out there with a the camera. So, I gotta check that one out. Okay, <laughs> again, if you saw something like this and you was close enough to take a picture like that, how in the world is you still a functioning human being? Look at this thing. In 2000, a Florida sighting of a large, stinking ape creature has been frequent for 30 years. But it was an anonymous woman, see a woman too on top of that, that mailed this single photo to a local sheriff's department to put a face to the name, the skunk ape. 
She wrote on three separate occasions this ape entered her backyard to steal apples. And since that time, nobody can disprove this photo. It looked authentic and highly possible it belongs to the group Hominy Cryptid said to inhabit Florida, Carolina, and Arkansas. And it could very well be creeping around. So look, yeah, man, look, if it was that close, why the thing didn't kill her, attack her? Who, like, who's going to steady a, look, it's not happening. You're not steadying the camera. You're not turning the flash on. You're not going to take no picture of this thing, <laughs> okay? It's just, you're not, unless you're in the safety of a metal tank. <laughs> That's the only way, period. And a woman on top of that, a man wouldn't do it. The brave me with all my homies ain't. No, it's not happening unless we get, you know, M16s and AR15s, <laughs> K47s. We need a whole lot of letters and numbers before we finna take a picture or something like that. Number six, the specter of Newby Church. In 1963, a church in North Yorkshire, England, Reverend K. F. Lord took this photo inside his church, along with several, alongside several others. He thought nothing until the film was developed and this hooded creature appeared. Experts say the photo is not the result of a double exposure. The figure is truly there in the shot. I wonder how much time did he spend alone in the church? You know how you preach and be just in the church for getting lessons prepared and taking phone calls. I wonder how much time he spent alone. If that really happened, I'm just wondering. But that picture, though, now that's a that's a pretty scary picture right there, man. That that that's a, that's enough to build a movie off of right there. Now I bet that preacher got up and said, "Church, we got an announcement to make. Uh, we're gonna be doing things outside for a while. We're gonna be doing worship outside. If it's time to worship, Bible study, Bible study outside. We're uh, we're gonna have. If you need to come up and meet with me." meeting outside counseling outside you need some food we're gonna do food pantry outside <laughs> you hungry uh when we have all the chicken and uh, fish fries chicken and fish fry outside <laughs> sister jones looking you know it ain't looking like too good looking like she ain't gonna make it too much longer sister jones funeral funeral outside <laughs> The UFO painting. Now, in the mid 1400s, you know, why this ain't really a photo. This painting called the Madonna with St. Giovanna by Demencio Gerlandia Delangiao depicts something real weird. Now, above Mary's right shoulder, you can clearly see a round, spiky object in the sky. Now, air travel wouldn't be invented for another 40 years, and there's no known phenomena. phenomena. That could account for the bizarre, you know, crazy shape and stuff in this otherwise just normal painting of this era. Now, I'm going to tell y'all what this is. This is because they had the hot air balloons back then. So this the hot air balloon and they put some kind of reflective, like, you know, some kind of reflective material, maybe cut, plated it in, in some silver or glass or something. They probably put some glass on it, a mirror or whatever. So when the sun hit it, uh... It reflected real bright because, you know, back then people always wanted to be seen. You know, it was like just like now, you know, everybody do everything as they be seen. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to get everybody watching me watch this. But instead of pulling up in like a Lambo or Ferrari, I'm going to pull up in a, in a big blimp <laughs> and blind everybody. The Phoenix Lights. Now, in 1997, five giant lights appeared in the sky over the city. Now, they appear, you know, one at a time, and they stay for a while, then shoo, take off. And reports from earlier that day said it was a big, mile-wide, like, dark aircraft in the sky moving from town to town. Now, a nearby Air Force Base claimed the lights were just flares attached to helium balloons, but because of how perfectly aligned they was, people ain't buy that. Uh, you know, it's you stuff like this. Um, to me, if the military speak on it, then it's something they doing. 
you know, because it's like we only speaking on it because people actually saw it. So they speaking on it because they know and they was doing it. You know, that's how I feel, at least. The Loch Ness Monster, number three, old Nessie, the sea monster, uh, you know, big old, big, biggest urban legend, probably the, you know, in my opinion, this to me is the biggest one, even as a kid, like when I was a kid, I grew up, I was like, one day I want to be the one to find the Loch Ness Monster, so uh, they say it's still this dinosaur, a plesiosaur, uh, you know. It's the surgeon's photograph from 1934, and it was later revealed to be a giant hoax, but, you know, made by a toy submarine and a plastic wood neck. But however, eyewitness accounts, even live footage of Nessie are evidence enough that there's at least one creature in the lake, supposedly. And, uh, you know, like I said before, man, uh, they got the, the technology to track whales and stuff. They be tracking whales all deep in the dang ocean. So you can't track the Loch Ness Monster in the middle of a dang lake. Come on, y'all. Bigfoots, also known as Sasquatch. And uh, this is in the American Northwest. Like Nessie, the legend of Bigfoot is growing bigger and bigger, hoaxes, fake photos, and all that. But it's really a possibility that Bigfoot ain't a hoax. Now, this these big old apes named Gigantophicus Blackie existed you know, recently, is, uh, they say 100,000 years ago. And they were over triple the size of humans and walked on back legs. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, look, man, mugs barely know what was going on in history a few hundred years ago. People got bits and pieces and stuff. So if mothers want to believe that, you know, that some kind of one, that a handful or whatever, some super, super monkeys have just, just went through, survived over all these years, and you go ahead. <laughs> but, uh, hey, them mugs don't know. They just run in their mouth and keep them, you know, trying to keep, trying to make some money, man. Now, hey, do I think Bigfoot real? I think that a, a bear in a certain situation could look similar to a Bigfoot. <laughs> Now, this right here, this is one that really tripped me out. Now, this is the Black Knight. The legend goes a mysterious black object orbit the Earth, one that's been around for 13,000 years. This object is called the Black Knight, and it's allegedly been, allegedly been beaming signals to Earth for a long time, but only recently have we seen the technology to receive the signals. Now, the legend claimed it was put there to watch us to study Earth the development of earth and this is one of the few photos taken of it now like a lot of myths it took a life of its own unrelated stories about noises from outer space combined with black knight theories give birth to this legend and there hasn't been much evidence of its continued existence but it's not impossible that somewhere out there someone is watching us now uh this i believe is real i believe that I don't believe that it was sent by aliens to watch us because if you could, I don't believe that, you know, I believe, but I do believe because if you was going to send something, why not send something that would blend in with the other satellites and stuff in space? But I believe that, um, that this is something that's put by the government and I believe they did it to scare other governments like maybe like russia you know back when the space race thing was happening maybe like russia was like hey we're gonna put this up in space to make americans think that somebody watching you know i believe some maybe america trying to scare russia that's how i feel about it but i do believe that this is real 